Welcome to a virtual version of the Lord's Day service for February 26, 2023. I'll start by reading some scripture. Our reading is from Genesis chapter 2. Hear what the Spirit saying to the church. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal in the, that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God say, Do not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, Do not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its, of its fruit and ate, and she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths of them. Our next reading is from Matthew. So, uh, yeah, our gospel reading. Uh, Matthew chapter 4. Hear what the Spirit saying to the church. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But then he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and their hands he will bear you up, and then he will not dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord of God, Lord your God, to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and then their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him. And then suddenly angels came and waited on him. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, have you looked into the eyes of a dog and wondered what's going on in its mind? Anyone who has spent significant time with animals starts to notice their moods and their behaviors, and they become familiar with them. Most of us haven't done this with a chimpanzee, but the complexity of thought and the connection is even greater with, with uh, uh, primates and chimpanzees because of their great intelligence and the subtlety of their facial expressions. We can get a window into their thinking. Even animals that aren't as smart as this, that we think of not being as very smart, if you spend enough time with them, people who are close to, say, horses or cattle or even sheep will talk about how much they can tell about them and how much they can have a window into how they think. Sometimes people will pr project their own feelings onto animals. Some will say that, you know, this is silly. Maybe sometimes it is, but there is more to it than we think because people constantly project their feelings and thoughts on other humans. They constantly assume they know what other people are thinking. So maybe it isn't so crazy after all when we think about this for animals. 
In fact, behavioral science is showing us that animals have more high-level cognition than we previously have known. We have also been learning more about human behavior. It's more instinctual and emotional, emotionally driven than we've ever known in the past, too. So if anything, the gap between humans and animals is narrowing as we learn more. So what makes us different? Now, most of the world will say, most of us would say, well, it's language. You know, it's our knowledge that makes us different. We remember the past through stories and books. We predict the future by extrapolating from our past and our accumulation of experience. We do this through language in a way that no other creature can. All people, regardless of time and culture, have origin stories. We all want to know where we came from and why we are here. The Genesis story is the most famous of these origin stories. And before the Enlightenment, and the Enlightenment, there was little reason to think that Genesis wasn't a fact. At least uh, it was as plausible as any other origin story. But as we learned more about the world and the universe, religious people have roughly split between those who believe in these stories literally and those who see them as allegory. It depends on how you ask the questions, but recent surveys have said that about 18% of Americans believe in a literal, strict seven days of creation. About 31%, which also includes some of the 18%, say that humans were created in, in whatever way, but they've also changed and evolved over time. The other 69% uh, have uh, are including the a majority of Christians actually accept evolution and they believe that it ha has happened over millions of years. So it, it's definitely a strong majority. Now, if you're troubled by this, or at least you're curious about it, I think it's helpful to remember that much of the Bible is less of a description of how and more of an explanation of why. This brings us back to why I talk so much about animal behavior. Because the questions we're really trying to answer are, what makes us human? And why did God create us? Sometimes we obsess over the mechanics of creation, but the story of Adam and Eve and the snake tell us much more about what it means to be human. There are a couple things that really stand out. One is, First, it's the tree of knowledge that God forbids them to eat from. The tree of knowledge. Second, neither Eve nor Adam needed very much convincing to eat the fruit. The snake simply planted the seed of doubt in their mind. No real coercion was needed. Finally, the fruit was good for food and the fruit would make them wise. This made them think that this, maybe the snake was telling the truth and that it was God that was lying in order to protect his power. Now, when you look at it, all of these responses are pretty understandable if you were in their shoes. Now, the story looks a little different when you set aside the systematic theology that has been taught to us all of our lives. You know, we all know this theology, and that is that Adam and Eve caused a curse. The decay of the whole universe depended on them. The death and resurrection of Jesus was required to break that curse, and he will defeat the powers of evil in the end times. This is a uh, theology that's been told to us many, many times. But if you look closely at the text, you, will, you might see that it's not quite so neat. Like a lot of things in the Bible, we have made it much more tidy than it really is. The real curse 
is not that we're going to die because there's really nothing in the Garden of Eden that, uh, that God said to them that promised Adam and Eve to have eternal life. Now, the real curse was that, they, that we know we're going to die. This is something that may be uniquely human. I don't know if your dog, dog has told you about his existential angst, but it's likely that he doesn't have any. <laughs> As humans, we know we have a choice. We are cursed with knowing the difference between good and evil. We have hope in a world that isn't evil. We hope for something better than that. Now, excuse the pun, but we want something more than a dog-eat-dog -dog existence. We hope for redemption. The fruit of the tree of knowledge is actually a curse of aspiration. This is something that seems to be uniquely human. The connection between Adam and Jesus is very apparent in the New Testament. The first Adam was cursed, and the second Adam, Jesus, removed that curse. And you can really see this in the temptation story, the one that we read in Matthew. All three temptations, the devil was trying to get Jesus to give in to evil, to do, to give up on being Jesus. Jesus was being tempted into that dog-eat-dog -dog way of living. First, Jesus was tempted to selfishly fill his belly. Second, Jesus was tempted to exert his power by force. Third, Jesus was tempted to exert his power by trickery and persuasion. But Jesus chose another way. He chose the way of good. He chose the way of self-sacrifice, the way of nonviolence. No dog-eat-dog -dog for Jesus. It was through humility and self-sacrifice that Jesus would break the curse. In Jesus, we can hope for something better. We can be redeemed from that curse. The knowledge of death no longer has power over us. The knowledge of evil no longer rules our lives. The suffering that Adam and Eve brought into the world is no longer the last word. We don't need a complicated system of theology. We don't need a co complicated system of belief to understand this. We don't need to have a literal belief in something that seems fantastical or even unbelievable. We don't need these things. Instead, we only need to understand what makes humans different than the rest of creation. We only need to know that we are blessed with intelligence and knowledge, but we are also cursed. We are cursed by the fear of death. We are cursed by the knowledge of good and evil, and we are cursed by the burden of our own sin and shame. Jesus has shown us the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The future of eternal life without death and without evil. This is the way of Jesus. This is the real story of creation. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for all you give us. We thank you for life. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you for language and story. We know what evil is. We know the curse of Adam and Eve in, in our lives. Thank you for coming to us in Jesus to show us another way. For the redemption he brings through death, death and resurrection. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.